Bombsteading, and today we're working on an old champion 3000 watt generator. I picked it up from a friend at work, uh, it hasn't ran in the last few years, so that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna get that thing up and running. Uh, this is basically kind of part of my emergency preparedness. I have a generator, my family mostly have a generator, but I wanted to get a few extra generators up and running in case there is a um, you know, uh, a, some sort of weather event or some reason that people need generators, I can actually have a few up and going and ready to go uh, because it's kind of nice to help people, um, you know, people that might not be able to be prepared or they just don't see the need for it. Uh, nevertheless, it's just nice to help people uh, when they're in need. So I want to make sure that I have a few generators up and running. Um, in the past, I've been always, you know, I have these things, but I don't have them running and I kind of want to make sure that I just have at least a few of them going. Uh, so my friends at HIPAA Carburetor uh, sent me out a carburetor for it. So I'm going to put the link in the description for that. Um, but we are just going to see if we can get this thing running. So this is what we're going to work on. It's a Champion 3500 peak watt and 3000 uh, running watts. It's got a little hour meter. You know, it's kind of a nice little generator. It's not big, but it's enough to run whatever you need. This is a 196 Honda clone motor, which they're great. So the first thing we're gonna do is drain out the fuel. If the fuel looks okay, and I don't have to flush out the tank, um, I will just throw the carburetor on and we'll see if we can get this thing up and running. Let's check the fuel tank. The screen is installed, so that's a good sign. That actually looks really clean and it doesn't smell too bad either, so I think we're just gonna fill it up. Take the air cleaner off. So we're gonna remove these four bolts and take this guard off. And those screws were eight mil. Okay, so we're gonna pull that out of there. That is your breather tube. And there's one bolt in the back right there. And then this box should come off. Basically, you pull the carburetor out, this little slot in the linkage will line up with the rod. If you just push up on it, it'll fall out. You get needle nose pliers. There's a tiny, tiny little spring. And then you unhook it. Don't stretch it. Unhook the fuel line and the carburetor's off. Okay, so this is what came in the carburetor kit. Comes with a choke lever. that the carburetor now we're going to make sure it's the same that lever is in the same orientation the choke lever everything should fit the fuel line same place that should work good they sent the uh, gaskets a new air filter and a HIPAA spark plug. Remove the old gaskets. Go through the gaskets they have. One of them is going to have a hole and the hole goes to the top left side, at least on mine. Try to remember when you pull the carburetor off to uh, keep an eye where that is. We're gonna throw the new carburetor in place. Okay, so basically, you are gonna turn this like that. 
Tell you can slide the linkage in place. And then we're gonna hook the spring on here and try not to stretch the spring. Now we can just shove the carburetor the rest of the way. So now you're gonna put the gasket from the carburetor to the air box. And there's a little notch right here and it lines up with this hole. And there's a little notch here which lines up with that. So this is the way the carburetor goes on. Make sure you don't plug up those holes. So now you're gonna install the choke lever. This pin goes into here, into the slot in this black lever. And you go like that, everything moves. Put the air box back on. It is an aluminum carburetor and kind of a, uh, a plastic plate that it comes up against, so you don't wanna go crazy. Just evenly tighten them. So now you install the uh, breather tube. So install the fuel line. Put the air filter in. the cover on and we are ready to give this thing a try. We'll turn on the fuel. So we got the carburetor installed. Now we gotta make sure when we get it fired up that it's not charging more than 120. Uh, putting a carburetor on a generator is not like most other things. It's just that you adjust it. Uh, if you're putting on a generator, you want to verify that it's not charging more than 120. Um, because what's going to happen is you're going to plug in your stuff and you're going to fry everything. So uh, after installing the uh, carburetor, you really need to spend some time and make sure that's not charging more than 120. If it doesn't have a gauge built into it, you need a multimeter, even a simple cheap one like this. Uh, so let's fire it up and see if we can get at least a run better and then we're going to check the voltage. The choke lever's pulled, the fuel is on, should fire up. 61 hertz, that is good. It's 48 hours run time. And if it is 122, 123, that is close enough. There's no issue with that. And especially if it's your voltage is way too high, this is the screw you use to adjust it down. The Champion 3000 watt generator is up and running and this is another step to my kind of emergency preparedness. This generator is not really for me so much, but I wanted to have some extra generators around just to help people. Uh, it really has come to my attention that there's a lot of people that aren't prepared uh, and at the very least you need a running generator for your house. Um, everything in your house runs on power and if you're hoping that someone can come and restore power quickly that might happen but it is a good chance it won't so you really do need a generator so i have learned that not all my friends have the same view of emergency preparedness as i do uh and you know if something happens like we have another dara show like i live in ottawa we had this huge dara show which is basically a real bad windstorm and uh, if we have another one of them, I really think even the poles that weren't changed, uh, you're, you're going to end up having way, way more power outages because you got poles that are damaged that they just can't see. So if you live in a house that needs power, you really need a generator to make sure uh, at the very least to make sure that your house can uh, still continue to run for a few days, um, possibly a week, uh, if you just don't have power. Can't always count on them to come and restore power quickly. Uh, you know... You could have a tornado, you could have major infrastructure damage. You just can't uh, count on them to be able to uh, restore power to you. So it's really important to make sure that you have a working generator in your house at the very least. So that's about enough for today. You guys have a good one.